This is Nina Taylor of the Gospel News. Please stay tuned for Season 4 of the Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show with your host, Apostle Designate, Minister John E. Ross. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, thou should have no pleasure in them. Jesus is gone and wipe your ear. He's soon to come. Christ on your side, you can make it. Christ on your side, you can make it. Christ on your side, you can make it. Christ on your side. Jesus is calling. He's calling. Jesus is calling. Even calling you. Remember, he called from day one. Day one. Remember them times you had the stacks and the guns. Man. Remember them times where everything went wrong and you blamed everyone else with that same old song. You got old. You got to call. Hey,
Maybe that's enough
says, I'll be committed to you. I'll never leave you. Nothing in this world could make me walk away. No matter what life may bring, I'll be by your side. No matter what you face, you won't be. our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. I am the Apostle Designate Minister John Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead minister and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries, and thank you for tuning in for Season 4 of the Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. Kingdom, our guest for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is radio and TV personality Nina Taylor. Nina is a 26-year radio veteran who has worked in all formats, including management of gospel artists and promotions. Sister Nina Taylor, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm very proud and honored to be here. I thank you for having me as a guest. I want to say hello to your audience. And again, I'm grateful. Amen. And kingdom, (laughs) our topic of discussion for this episode is Christ in our relationships. To begin, let's start in Genesis where relationships began. Genesis, the second chapter, the 16th through the 18th verses. 
the 21st through the 24th verses, the third chapter of Genesis, the 1st through the 7th verses, and the 14th through the 19th verses. For time's sake, I will not read all, but I want the kingdom to know where we are speaking from. I want to begin by reading from the New American Standard Bible, which declares, Mm -hmm. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make for him a suitable helper for Mm -hmm. him. Now, Kina, we want to note right here that it was here that God created the reproduction system in males and females. Kingdom suitable means someone who is appropriate for a particular person, purpose, or situation. So it's important to note here that God will choose according to our created purpose. This truth just cut by the sword of the Spirit, Sister Taylor, why so many mm-hmm. of us end up in divorce court. Because yeah. we chose or began seeking a mate we chose from a different place outside the will of God. What says you, Sister Taylor, about this observation? Well, I think that you're absolutely correct. I think whatever we do, anything, including choosing a mate what goes against God's will for us, what he will have for us, I think it, it, it's, it's not going to work. It's definitely yeah. not going to work. Um, I've done it myself. I've, I've been married two times already. Um, I know the second one going in that it wasn't, I know it wasn't <laughs> his will for me. Uh, even before I even did it, I was, going on 30 years old, and I was thinking, oh, I'm not married, I need to be married. Um, I was, you know, just had a lot of things going on, and here comes someone comes along who you really are not attracted to. If you were attracted to them, then you could kind of see uh, who was not, you know, he was Catholic. Um, So many things that made us opposite. Um, Knew going in that it wasn't going to work. Um, but did it anyway, and so do a lot of other people. You know, they do it for financial reasons or whatever the case is. I think that is always going out of the will of God, and it never works. Amen, amen, mm-hmm. and amen to that, because I can agree with that, because I am divorced also. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. And kingdom, as I was studying this, I seen the next place of trouble in Genesis, the second chapter, the 16th through the 17th verse, which declares, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, Mm -hmm. but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Here Mm -hmm. we see and understand the command was given to Adam before our helpmate was created. So what I began to realize, Kingdom and Sister Taylor, is God Mm -hmm. put a lot of trust and faith and information upon us, the man, to teach and understand relationship from the perspective of God's relationship with Adam the first created, so that Adam would pass down that information and teaching to Eve. Now understand, God had created the animals before the woman as a pair, with the thought in mind to begin the family Mm -hmm. in relationship with God and family. So kingdom, a part of man's purpose, was to steward Mm -hmm. relationship between God and the family. For this to be successful, the woman also had to understand their purpose. Women was Mm -hmm. created to be a loving companion for man and a helper Mm -hmm. for him. As such, she was to share the responsibility and cooperate with him in fulfilling God's purpose for their lives and the life of the family. So, Sister Taylor, do you think that today's woman understands these truths when they are seeking a husband or pursuing relationships? Well, in today, today, uh, you have to look at where we are, where we come from. We were talking about this on one of my other shows uh, yes. a few weeks ago where uh, back in my grandmother's day, my grandmother was the mother of 
eight children. Yeah. She did not. She did not work at all. She her, she stayed home. She cooked all the meals. Her husband went out and worked, and she knew that was what her role was. It, it never occurred to her that she would be doing anything but um, taking care of her kids, her family, her husband. That was her job, and she understood that, and that's yeah. the way it was. Now, when my mother was coming up, you know, we're talking about swing forward to the 60s and 70s, uh, she went into the marriage like that, but shortly after, it was like, we both have to work, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, she still had the role of the housekeeper, the cook, the, the you know, the caregiver of the husband and all the children and everything, but mm-hmm. she also had to work because, you know, you're looking at a, an economy that's now different, you know, that's now yes. different, so... Both people are understanding that now they have to work. Okay, now swing forward to the 80s and 90s where women are going to college. Uh, they, you know, they feel like, well, if I were to get married, then that would somehow, you know, maybe mess up my life or somebody's after me because I'm professional, because I have all of this. Now we're, we're taking on the, uh, this thing where, well, I don't necessarily have to get married. I've got everything I need. So is that what we were doing back before? We were only getting married because the husband could provide everything that we didn't have. And all we were going to do is have babies and take care of the house and take care of him. You know, that's so that's all changed now. You're looking at the 80s where women, more women are in college than men. You know, they're going to school. They're getting uh, better jobs. They're making more money. So now who's taking care of the house and the kids? It's like, okay, either we're both going to do it or I'll do it, but I don't really need you because if you can't help me, <laughs> then I don't need you. So we're taking on a whole other role Amen. of instead of just being the wife, the mother, the caregiver, the, the one who takes care of everything in the home because now we have money. <laughs> now we have our own money. We have education. So in, in a lot of people's minds, they think, that I don't have to be this person who plays, I don't have to clean up the house. I can pay somebody to do it. Or he gets home before I do. Why don't he do it? You know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. you take care of the kids. Uh, I make more money than you, so you take care of the kids. You pick them up from school. I work longer hours. I make more money. So now you've got women who are, are taking on uh, a role that's not theirs, regardless of how, much money you make or what your job is or what your education is. And and a lot of women, especially that I know, they're married to people or they're with men who have little or no education or maybe just high school. Mm -hmm. So in their mind, they're thinking, I'm in charge because I've got all the money. See, they're going, again, whenever we do anything that's out of his will, it doesn't work. And that will never work because that is not how he designed men and that is not what he designed us for. So, again, we're going out of the will, and it doesn't work. Amen. So then, Sister Taylor, mm-hmm. do you think that this sort of teaching will help us in our relationships or have no effect? Well, from what I know, what I have studied, <laughs> uh, 70% are in the black church alone the divorce rate is now 70%. What's going on? Are we not listening? We're not paying attention. It's 70%. That's more than the national average, which is 62%. That's more than the national average. That means that every person who gets married, now I I can look at my own church, the church that I just came out of. Um, Almost every person who got married in the 12 years I was at that church, they're no longer together including me, you know, what's going on? We're not listening. We're not paying attention. We're not, we're not doing what we're supposed to do at all. Amen. So kingdom, <laughs> we want to switch directions here real quick. When pursuing mm-hmm. a relationship, I pray we agree that God should be at the center of that relationship. We should strengthen then our relationship with God and Christ before God brings a person to us 
or, of course, I realize that in today's society, they do not desire God, at least in the way that they should, which leads to my next red flag, which is the command from God to not partake of the tree of good and evil, which means you don't decide on your own what you think is right or wrong. God was trying to teach us obedience to God and his word. Tree means to teach. The fruit on the tree are the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, faith, gentleness, temperance, etc., which mm -hmm. are Christ. We are the tree. We should be rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. However, Satan, who was cast out of heaven and lost mm -hmm. his glory and his beauty, made it his agenda to separate creation from creator. And he saw the perfect place to do that, especially since the woman was not created at the time of the command. So once Satan was able to persuade the woman to disobey and she was able to persuade Adam, sin entered. Thus bringing murder, divorce, abuses, identity mm -hmm. confusions, etc. All was birthed which is the main component of the lifelong problems we face when it comes to relationships until Jesus comes again. So, Sister mm -hmm. Taylor, how do you feel about second marriages, etc., and do you think that there should be a limit on how many times it takes to get it right? Well, there actually is a limit in here in America. You can do it seven times, and then that's it. So, and that I think that's too many. Uh, you got I know somebody who's barely in his 40s, and he's already been married five times. You know, five marriages. Um, just people are not going into marriage like they did. It's like, okay, I'm marrying you because I want to spend my life with you. No, they're going into the marriages saying, I'm marrying you until you mess up or make me mad and I'm gone. You know, they're going into the marriages already planning the divorce with prenuptial yeah. agreements and, um, you know, nobody is willing to, nobody is going into it for life like what we were commanded to do, like what is in order of what how God wants us to live. I mean, think about my grandparents were married for 52 years uh, and my grandmother passed away at 69 years old. And this is, that means that she got married at the age of, 16 and stayed married to the same man her entire life and there was never any question because I was like how, how did y'all do it I mean she said there was never any question and this is only she only knew him for two weeks wow. they got married and then two days later he was shipped off to World War II so now she's married a man she's only known two weeks and now he's gone they got to know each other by way of letters while he was, you know, fighting in the war until he went over to Germany. Then she did not hear from him for months, you know. Then they started a family when he got out. And there, she said there was just never, that never crossed her mind. It was, it's different. It's crossing everybody's mind now. It's like they're looking at you at the altar saying, okay, I'm marrying you, but you mess up and you're done. You know, you do this, you do that, and I'm out of here. Right. You know, that's the attitude that everyone's going into marriage for. Nobody's going in it for life. You know, I've done it myself two times. Uh, the second time, honestly, it was like, you know, I don't know why I even did it. You know, <laughs> well, I know why I did it. It was just a lot of stuff going on, and I felt like that, you know, you have someone who wants to help you in a situation, and you'll go ahead and do it. But I never thought that I would be with this person forever. Never. And that never even crossed my mind. You know, and that's what everybody else is doing, too. That's why the the divorce rate is so high in this country. Nobody's looking at it as a lifetime thing. They're yes. looking at it as a temporary thing. So going into it, if you are committed, you have two people who are committed to God and say, yes, I want to live how he wants us to live, then that's the only way that you're going to make it. If things are going to happen, you know, you're a human being. Things are going to happen. People are going to make you mad. People are going to mess up. But you got to be committed to saying, I'm going to stay no matter what. 
I took those vows, and I meant them. When I did it the first time, I meant them. There was never any thought in my mind that I would not be with this person all the days of my life. Never. I was I was young. We got married. I was 20. Uh, he was a little older. And there was never any thought to me that we were not going to be married forever. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Now, Amen. we're going to lead right into the next mm-hmm. question, Kingdom, which is possessing the fruit of the Spirit, which is Christ, is key to a spiritual, healthy family, but mm-hmm. it's not taught much in churches in today's mm-hmm. society. Sister Taylor, what to you are some key components that will lead to a successful, long marriage and not just develop a way to tolerate one another? Okay. Um, I'm ready from Galatians to the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patient, kindness, yeah. goodness, Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you have to have all of that. <laughs> to, I think the main thing is probably self-control besides love. I mean, you have to have the control to say, okay, this went wrong, but we're going to pray through it. We're going to pray about it. We're going to stay together, and we're going to come through this together. You know, yeah. instead of saying, oh, I'm out of here. I'm packing my bags because this happened. Or yeah. that now, I get it. Stuff happens that's real big sometimes. Um, but, again, if you know it's the one that he chose for you, I don't think you'll have those things for a while. So I would say probably self-control, of course, mm-hmm. love, and faithfulness. Hey, man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen again on that. Please, Dr. Nina Taylor, introduce yourself to the kingdom. Well, again, I'm Nina Taylor. I I currently have five shows. Well, first, let me say I'm originally from Philadelphia, uh, the city of brotherly love. Um, yeah. My dad, my dad was a police officer in Philadelphia. Uh, like I said back then, my mom was a housewife. Um, we, I moved to Ohio. I attended college, undergraduate school at Central State University. Um, I'm now pursuing a master's in entertainment and music business administration. Um, I'll be finished in April, you know, so pray for me for that. Uh, in addition to that, I have five shows currently. Um, I'm on the radio somewhere in the world every hour of every day. Um, my show here, here in Central Ohio, is called The Afternoon Ride, uh, where I've been here since 2012. I started here in Ohio. I got an internship at the age of 19, and they actually asked me not to go back to school, to stay and work, and I was doing radio ever since. And why it's only 26 years is because I took six years off. Uh, had it not been six years off, I would be going on uh, 31 years in radio. But I took six years off. So, <laughs> uh, besides that show, I do have a, two national shows. One called The Gospel Countdown, where actually now I'm doing the show with another person. Which we did that show here, and we just kind of kept it going. And a couple of people heard that show and wanted to bring it to the national level. So that show is now national. Also, my other show, The Gospel Express, which is uh, currently on 32 stations around the country. Mm. Um, that's the show where you heard Marcus Cole, and uh, it's kind of centered around the gospel industry and the gospel artists, uh, kind of showcasing artists and music, and not all famous ones, but also new ones, independent ones of all genres of gospel music. So that's kind of what that show is. I have two Sunday morning shows, at both in the state of Texas, one in Colleen, the other one in San Antonio. So you can hear me uh, from 6 to 9 in San Antonio and from 8 to 10 in Colleen, Texas. Uh, one show is called the Sunday Express. The other one is called the Rhema Gospel Express. Um, I think that's all the shows. I don't want to see. Yeah, that was five shows. <laughs> and then I have uh, the Gospel News, which I started in 2012. Uh, after, uh, what has it been, seven years now, the Gospel News is now over on over 400 stations around the world and in more than eight countries. 
uh, including Africa, uh, of course, Canada, um, in uh, the Caribbean, uh, Bermuda, and also, uh, oh my goodness, Bahamas. There's a station there in the Bahamas that actually is run out of New York, but it runs in the Bahamas. Uh, so I'm on there too, um, in Mexico, and of course in London, where I've been twice. Um, and I'm very proud of that. That's why I said every hour of every hour of every day, you can catch me on the radio somewhere in the world. Uh, very proud of the Gospel News. I've been nominated for uh, two awards for the Gospel News for Best Media. I didn't win, but I was nominated, which I was very proud because I was like, how do they even know me? You know, <laughs> how do they know who I am? But I've been nominated twice for awards for, for my newscast, and now this year, I have some other nominations, which I'm very, very proud of. Amen. And just to let the listening audience know, on the Let's Talk to the Lord gospel radio station, you can Mm -hmm. catch Nina's news and a couple of her radio shows are streaming 24 hours a day on our station. So if you want to enjoy Sister Taylor, just tune in to Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio <laughs> so Station. Much. And I see you, you have been nominated for several SPIN Awards, too. Please tell us about your SPIN Award nominations. Well, I just found out about the SPIN Awards actually like a year ago. I had no idea what it was about. I just kind of heard that one of my friends had won one. And that's the only reason why I know I had him on the show, and we were just talking about it. And then here... About eight, nine months later, I get this email saying that I have been nominated. I'm like, what? You know, I, I was just overwhelmed, you know, just completely overwhelmed. Um, I'm nominated for Personality of the Year and also Radio Host of the Year, which is completely an honor. Uh, so I'll be going to Atlanta on the 24th of this month to uh, participate in the festivities and everything around there. Not going to win, per se. Uh, but just want to be there and meet a lot of the people that I have been working with for the past seven years with the news and uh, some of the news stations that are running my show. I know a lot of the people are going to be there, and I'm just looking forward to meeting them and having a great fellowship with them as well. Amen. And then we'll get to meet one another because I will be in Atlanta at the Spin Awards. I've been nominated. Well, Let's Talk uh-huh. to the Lord has been nominated for Best Radio Talk Show Speaker Blog Talk. And mm-hmm. then I have been nominated for Best Host of the Year. So uh-huh. I have. I am looking forward to now meeting you in Atlanta. I presented last year, and I I believe I will be presenting this year. I won last year. Let's talk to the Mm -hmm. Lord won last year. And so we Mm -hmm. pray that the Lord will bless us to win again this year. (laughs) Amen. That's awesome. In Atlanta. Well, I did vote for you this year. I did vote for you. (laughs) And I voted for you a lot. So (laughs) we'll see how we all come out in Atlanta. Amen. And please tell us, what are your websites that the listening audience can access and learn more information about you? Well, surprisingly, I am actually under construction with my own personal website. After all these years, I don't know why I didn't have one. I don't, you know, I mean, it's like, why don't you have a website? I don't know. You know I, just <laughs> never, I just maybe never had the time to actually sit down and say, I need a website. But I'm having one made as we speak. Uh, but you can catch me on all social media. I'm really uh, quite quite happy with, the, you know, the social media uh, and the followers and how well everything has been received. Uh, of course, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, the Black Preachers Network, uh, and I have a YouTube channel. Um, I have several, actually, one under Nina Taylor and the other one under the Blazing Hot Place, which, like I said, is one of my national shows, and we have almost 1,200 videos on there, which we had no idea. You know, we've been doing the show now it'll be four years in November. Had no idea we had that many videos. But uh, every, all the shows are doing well. I'm very, very proud of all of them and looking forward to it. Oh, and also I wanted to say that um, after we were talking about relationships, I said after all these years of two marriages, two divorces, um, I think if you sit back and wait, I've been single since 2011 and not interested in, uh, you know, meeting anyone or thinking maybe that part of my life is just over because 
I'm not going to go out looking for a husband or a man or anything like that. Um, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do, which is if it's for me, he's going to come to me, which is exactly what happened. So I met someone really, really nice who I had no idea, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> it, mm-hmm. it just makes a difference if you're doing things in order, you know, Amen. instead of uh, doing things out of order. It, it, it's really it's different for me, different. So I'm really, really, for the first time, really happy. And, you know, he feels the same way about a lot of things that I do which makes a difference, you know, yeah. and then just marry somebody because you need help or marry somebody because you need a baby daddy or, or whatever the case is. It, it, those things never, hardly ever work out. Amen. And how may the kingdom support your ministry and all that you do for the gospel industry? Well, they can listen to my shows and listen to my news. I think, you know, that is the biggest support, and that's, like I said, how people – have come to know me, which, you know, has really, really been a blessing. Um, And I do commercial work. If uh, someone needs uh, commercial voiceovers or commercial stuff for their business, I'm happy to do that. You know, I do have a business. And some of the radio stations have actually put me to work uh, doing uh, business, doing commercials and voiceovers for their clients, which is kind of the way I, you know, I don't sell any of my shows or in my news. um, So that is how I make money. So that's, that's really been a blessing to be able to do that as well. Amen. And Kingdom, before we go, we want to let you know that the music you will hear during this podcast are How Did You Know by Lisa Shipman and Hillary Hill, Forever by Jason Nelson, and Lay Our Love on the Altar by mm-hmm. Marcus Cole. Kingdom, Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on iHeartRadio, Speaker.com, Spotify, Alexa, YouTube, His Hop Radio, Kingdom Influencers Broadcast.com every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 o'clock Eastern, Elation Radio, iTunes by Jerry Royce Live, and at Positive Power XXI.org. My latest EP, Remember Now Thy Creator, is available in all digital stores. And Kingdom and listening audience, as you heard me say earlier in the podcast, we have began a radio station. To listen, please go to Let's Talk to the Lord, Gospel Radio International, or Streamitter.com, or Radio Garden or MyTuner.com. Search those radio platforms for Let's Talk to the Lord, Gospel Radio Station on our station. We have 24 hours of music, talk, and more, and Sister Nina Taylor. Amen. So until next time, may God bless you, and may God keep you, living your lives and your relationships under a open heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
ask me to forgive you Well, darling, you know You know I do And you know, you know, you know I'm sorry for the things that I've done to you So let's get down on our knees together Leave.